And our next speaker is Sophie. And I know Sophie, and she'll be talking about M365 on security. Thank you, Sophie. Yeah. Do you know anything about Mrs. Premium, Mohammed? <laughs> <laughs> I think the last one will be nice and light, hopefully. Um, I'll just share my screen one second. Right, bear with me. Chris is on. I'm sure Chris knows something about this. Does he? Oh, that's a D. 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 Yeah, is normally the say, licensing guys. Where's, where's Dean Ellaby when? I know. Where's need he him? when you need him? Oh, that's only licensing, mate. Come on. It's Dean's like prime thing. Oh. This is. Right. Can you guys see that? Yep. Yeah. Security features. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Um. So thank you so much for having me. First of all, this is actually the first tech talk I've done for a user group. So really appreciate you guys having me on and just letting me have a bit of experience doing this sort of stuff. Thank you so much as well to the previous two speakers because I learned a lot um, and yeah, it was just nice. And it's nice to have three women at a user group speaking as well. Um, so this talk is going to be on the security features in Microsoft 365 Business Premium. If I do have more time at the end, I will talk about some of the hidden gems that I found as well that are also included in the Microsoft 365 Business Premium that some people may not know about. But if you don't know who I am, um, appreciate, I do not look like this picture at all right now. This was at the races on Saturday. It's amazing what a bit of makeup and having my hair down can do. Um, but I am the account director at Geocom. If you don't know Geocom, they're an IT distributor. They only specialise within software. And previous to that, I was a Microsoft Cloud consultant for an MSP. So I predominantly specialise within the Microsoft stack and very much so sort of day in day out having conversations around the Microsoft licenses and the end customer and more importantly just keeping them secure and making sure they're on the right licenses so I never like to say that I'm I'm technical yes I am a woman in tech but I'm not hands-on with technology however apologies a lot of bikes going outside the house um However, I do work with day in, day out Microsoft consultants, Azure consultants, and I do like to keep up to date with vendor announcements and changes within technology just so I can do the best possible job for my partners. Um, and I find technology really, really interesting. So um, I like to keep up with that sort of stuff. I am also the co-host of the Microsoft Spotlight podcast. So if you don't know what that is, we well, me, Andrew Moran and John Jarvis. Um, Andrew Moran is a former MVP. We interview and put women, female leaders within the tech community in the spotlight and just find out about their experiences and about what they do. So if you know anyone that um, is interested or that may be good for that, then let me know. I also manage the Microsoft Women in Tech user group. So please go on my LinkedIn and follow that. And like I said, this topic really is for anyone who is maybe in a customer facing role who is talking to customers and wanting to upsell into something that is more secure um, for all of the end users. So we'll get started. So a bit of a summary, I'll quickly go over this. So I'm going to be talking about what's included in Microsoft 365 Business Premium, along with what the difference is between the business basic, the business standard and the business premium an overview of the security features in a little bit of detail within Microsoft 365 Business Premium. And then if I've got time, hidden gems um, as well in the Microsoft 365 Business Premium. So again, this is just something and feel free if you want this presentation afterwards that you can show end customers um, to let, let them understand a little bit more about what's going on within their licenses. So I, get, I want to start off with what is included in at Microsoft 365 Business Premium. So you'll see here and some, you know, most people don't really know the ins and outs, but you've got everything. You've got your cloud services, your desktop applications, and then the advanced security and device management. So I won't go through every single one. You'll recognize, you know, some, if not most of these. But the main point of this is that everything is included. You don't need to go for the E5 or the more expensive licenses if you are a, an SBM or a smaller organisation. Everything's included in here and it has got a really good level of security. 
the differences um and again i'll just sort of touch lightly on this but you'll see the differences here in the different licenses so the business basic is just made up of your exchange your teams your sharepoint onedrive whatever else and then it slowly just gradually gets more um, but there's such a big jump between sort of your business basic and standard to your business premium um and it is that just extra level of security that you are getting with your business premium every single partner i speak to every single customer that i speak to i'm always going for this um it's such a big topic security nowadays especially with working from home and the cultural change that we've seen um and i just think it's really really important so if you again if you want a little snippet of this let me know more than happy to send it you over so moving on to the security features within microsoft 365 business premium the first one being and again most of you may know also i can't see any questions coming in um because i've just got it in a weird format where i can only see my screen so if there if there are any feel free to shout up um what I will do as well is I've got my email on the last slide. So if you do have any more technical questions around any of these, then let me know and I'll get back to you within you know, the end of the week or whatever. If I don't know them, someone else will. Um, so Microsoft Intune, that's used to manage and control PCs, Macs, Android and iOS devices. So Intune allows you to get endpoint security and device management. You can configure specific policies to control applications. So for example, you can prevent emails being sent to people outside of your organization. It just helps you manage everything from all the different devices that you possibly can do. It can also be used with the Microsoft 365 suite of products, what I've already spoke about and what you've seen in the different licenses. So your Teams, your OneDrive, your SharePoint. And I think that's I mean, it's such a transformation from where we've been. Um, you know, I can use Teams and everything on my phone now. It's not necessarily a good thing because work never stops, but it you do you have got that level of security there using Microsoft Intune. So Intune can be integrated with Azure AD, so that's for access control and Azure Information Protection. And they are both included in Microsoft Business Premium, which I'll talk about later. So it's just there to help. Um, secure, deploy and manage all users, apps and devices without disruption to existing processes. The next one, um, moving nicely on, is Azure Information Protection. Now, this is good for collaboration um, and whilst collaborating, knowing that your data is protected. So it protects important information from unauthorised access by applying labels to content. I know this is something that in Geocom and in my previous employment, we did use a lot when we were sending emails out to external customers and clients. Um, so it allows you to enforce policies that improve data security and helps enable secure collaboration. The Azure Information Protection unified label and extends classification and protection capabilities to additional file types, as well as to the File Explorer and PowerShell. And I'd also be interested to know how anyone within this chat has found collaboration since working from home and, um, you know, what they've done or what their organisations have done to collaborate more. Um, because I know that for some of my partners, it has been a struggle, um, but this is something that has helped along with just being protect protected. So conditional access. Um, and again, something that's been implemented in the places that I've worked, um, MFA being a big one, multi-factor authentication is what I just drive into my partners to tell their end customers when it comes to the first thing that you do in terms of security and getting that zero trust. So conditional access allows you to set and manage access controls. It's a capability of Azure Active Directory that enables you to enforce controls all based on specific conditions and managed from a central location. So conditional access enables zero trust security, helping you provide this access while maintaining control over so where, when and who is connecting to your Office 365 environment. Next one. Um, has anyone got any questions, by the way, for now? Or is it all pretty clear? I'm hoping that you all sort of know this a little bit. Yeah, OK. I'll yeah, take a silence for something. 
Yeah, no worries. Um, so the next one being Windows Virtual Desktop. So this allows you to work flexibly, flexibly wherever you want. Um, you can de deploy virtual workstations using either Windows 7 um, or Windows 10 using the Azure Virtual Desktop infrastructure. Virtual desktops are provided on either a per user or per device basis. And while access to the service itself is included in Business Premium, you will be or your end customers will be charged for the Azure virtual hardware. So just something to bear in mind. Um, so Windows Virtual Desktop allows you to provide fully virtualized workstations for your employees, which is especially useful in the new working from home culture. The next one is Defender for Business. Um, so Defender for Business protects your corporate and employee personal devices. So this is a new endpoint security solution um, that was designed especially for the small to medium sized businesses, which is predominantly all that I've worked with. Um, so up to 300 employees. And again, this is why Microsoft created these licenses um, for specifically these SMB companies. So this prevents and protects against device threats with anti-malware, antivirus, ransomware mitigation, web and network protection. So you can get behavioural based alerts and automate detection, investigation and remediation. And then moving on from that is your Defender for Office 365. Um, so this protects your emails from external threats um, and it offers a comprehensive solution to protect your organisation and employees from advanced targeted and zero day phishing, malware and business email compromise attacks. So Microsoft Defender for Business is included in Microsoft 365 Business Premium, but it is also available as a standalone. Um, so if you want to add that on to your business basic or your business standard, then you can do. And it just gives you that extra protection on your emails against, against your external threats. So I think this may be the last one or maybe the second to last one. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, Cloud App Security, I think it is the last one. Um, so this keeps all of your cloud services secure and um, we're very much on the path from hopefully everyone moving over to the cloud but this identifies and combats cyber threats across all of your cloud services so cloud app security is a cloud access security broker and that supports various deployment modes including log collection api connectors and reverse proxy Working from home has introduced new challenges and com um, complexities for keeping organisations secure. Um, so to get the full benefit of cloud apps and services, an IT team must find the right balance of supporting access while protecting critical data. And this is where your cloud access security broker really helps. Um, so it acts as a gatekeeper to broker access in real time between your enterprise users and cloud resources and the cloud resources that you use. So wherever your users are located um, and regardless of the device they are using, you'll be able to, it'll be able to act as a gatekeeper in real time. So I am timing myself, um, but I guess we can go over the hidden gems within Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Um, and some of these are really cool. Again, I don't know much of these in great detail, but it's a really good overview of really understanding what's included in Microsoft 365 Business Premium to be able to either understand how to use it, maximise everything that's involved in it, because um, a lot of people don't do that. Um, and again, with the Microsoft Cloud Partner Programme, it's important to utilise everything within your licences um, because we're now getting scored for it and whatever else. So these are some of the hidden gems. So again, if you would like this slide, then you know, you're more than welcome to have it. Uh, so just I'll read them out and then we can just go in a little bit more detail. Um, so Power Automate, Power Apps, Bookings, Clipchamp, Project for the Web, Planner and Viva Insights. Um, so Power Automate, I mean, everyone talks about Power Automate currently um, and it's something that's sort of really helping businesses um, to automate business processes. So create powerful workflow automation directly in your apps with a no-code approach that connects to hundreds of popular apps and services. Um, moving on to Power Apps, so that allows you to build apps. Um, again, I, I won't sort of go through this in loads of detail, but but you can see it. I know the, what, the main ones that we use and 
please shout out if you are using any as well um, or if you didn't know that some were included um, uh, your, your power apps your power automate booking i think we are just starting to use that um planner 100 percent. i love that obviously i've got to be as organized as possible um but yeah is any does, does anyone else use these like on a day-to-day -day basis or or know of them yeah i, I use some of the fever insights for trying to work out how to structure my day sometimes right, okay. when it works it does it does it work oh uh, it it does. Um, it, it's also useful because, it, it, as you'll know, it gives you a summary at the end of the week of where you were most productive, and then it yeah. tries to help fit in where, where if you need to focus some time, it like analyzes your calendar and say, well, you can book in 15 minutes here to do stuff, which has been useful. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I think for me as well, when it gives you the notifications that I haven't done something, or it's like, oh, you, yeah. it's taking you four days to reply to this person. I'm like, oh no. Uh, but it is really helpful in, in that sense. Yeah, anyone else? Definitely. Anyone else use any of these? Yeah, we've done a lot with Power Automate in the past. Um, connecting forms, completions, and putting those into SharePoint, and then yeah. approval workflows, emails to people. Yeah, Power Automate's one that's really worth learning. It's a bit of a steep learning curve to start with, but it's um, it, it can do absolutely anything. It's brilliant. Yeah, I think to be honest, most well, a, a couple of businesses that I know are actually getting teams that, you know, specialise within this and and that work around Power Automate, whether that's in the business or actually external for customers. So. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it tends to be something that I, I'm in the IT department, so it tends to be me that drives it and <laughs> builds these flows. But yeah, there's a few people getting getting interested and in, yeah, sort of realising the potential it's got, and it's um, yeah, it's growing pretty quickly. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Does has anyone use ever ever this clip champ? Because it's not something that I'm that I've used much of. And I think to be honest, it's probably more for maybe your marketing team or anything like that. But has anyone heard of it? Yeah, um, it's like a new video editor being plugged by Microsoft as part of like Windows eleven, I think. Oh is it? Yeah. I'm using it. Sorry, me. Sorry, uh, I'm using it and uh, it's a very easy and fun way to make videos. Is it? Yeah. Well, I need to try it. I mean, I, I love doing videos and stuff on LinkedIn and wherever else, so it's definitely something that I need to try. <laughs> Maybe I'll be doing it on my podcast. Maybe that's what I'll do. Uh, so, yeah, so they're just some of the hidden gems that um, some people don't know about um, or aren't particularly using or utilising that I think is, is quite cool. Um, in regards to the project side of things, I guess I guess it's something that you can work in whatever team. Um, and yeah, I think they're really cool little add-ons. So that's me. Um, thank you for listening. Again, if you have got any questions that go a little bit deeper into that, then let me know. Um, and my colleague that I'm aligned to is more than happy to answer any technical questions and myself, I'll find out for you. Um, and as well, if you want to give me a follow on LinkedIn, that's fine. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for having me. And that's me. Thank you for coming, Sophie. Cool. Qu quick question, Sophie, before you go. Um, yeah. Are you finding with your customer engagement that they actually use all the products they license for, or a lot of the products, or they just license for one thing that they want and forget about the rest of it? So it's very difficult, and it all depends on the MSP. So my my partners now are all MSP, and they're all so different. Some will be really into pushing cust and customers to be the most secure and to use and utilize these licenses, um, and then others and other other end customers. To be honest, just either don't have the time or just don't prioritise it. But I think when you know more about it, it is really important to understand. And, you know, it can make your day to day life so much easier. Um, and if people are using things correctly, like even the basics like Teams and your OneDrive and stuff, if you're using them co correctly, then it's really helpful. Um, but with I don't know if, you know, obviously I know the speakers will do, but with the new Microsoft Cloud um, partner program, um, that's taken place instead of you know your gold your silver and things like that part of it is actually you making sure you're utilizing your licenses so now since this has come about the only conversations i've been having really are these ones um which is a little bit different to what i was previously doing a year or so ago 
Did you mention that Microsoft scores you on customer engagement as to what licenses they're actually using? Is that how they're doing it now? Well, yeah, it's split up into so it's so the, the split up into solution areas, um, and then different solution areas are basically scoring you on customer success, skills, and the last one I can't remember unless anyone knows. Um, but yeah, it's basic that's what it basically is, um, utilizing you on how much you, you're using your licenses, but for your end customers as well. Yeah. And then it's all your accreditations and things. Um and then that is split up into SMB and enterprise. So it's all very confusing. <laughs> uh, but they've yeah, they've split it up quite quite a lot. Maybe I should have done a session on that. Talk you through the MCP thing. <laughs> next one, next one. <laughs> Maybe next time. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody else have any more questions? No. There's no more questions in the chat either, Sophie. So we Perfect. can give everybody the evening back. No, thank you for speaking. Thank you for attending. Sophie, what are you? And Diliana, but I know Diliana's dropped off. It's been brilliant having you. Mm -hmm. And thank, thank you everybody else for doing it.